Welcome back to another episode on the podcast. This one's a really interesting one because I've got an international guest, uh, <laughs> former pro DJ uh, turned spiritual cacao entrepreneur, one of my, well, not one of my, my best mate, and um, yeah, just absolute legend of a guy that was like yesterday, yeah, let's jump on a, let's jump on a podcast while I'm in international waters, the Wi-Fi is not great, and... Yeah, here we are. Welcome, Dan Kosh, back on the podcast. Cheers. Thank you very much, man. Thank you for having me. And yeah, the <laughs> Wi-Fi is not great, and I'm in pitch black, but let's give it a go. It's That's what we do, man. I think that's pretty much us in a nutshell is like, let's, you know, we've been sorting out technical shit for the past half an hour, but it's like, and you this, like an hour ago, you're like, I'm getting a haircut. got to look fresh. So if you're not joining us on YouTube, you should um you get to see dan's fresh fade but uh i feel like for us we're we're just well we're man gens but so that explains it but like we just do shit we just do things we think we of it we do it like you're in peru right now and still doing <laughs> shit so what are you doing in peru uh man so i'm uh I'm here to, to come back into the jungle to revisit uh, the Ashaninka tribes and the villages from where we get our cacao from. So last time I was here was August 2019. That cacao, this cacao, oi. Yeah. So I'm going to go back to the jungle. I'm going to show them what we've done with it and our packaging and just have a look and just make sure that they're all doing okay and that uh, you know what we're doing is okay for them. And then to also talk about the future, um, you know, we've placed a really big emphasis on Criollo cacao. For those that don't know, Criollo cacao is the original cacao strain and actually comes from the Amazon. That's where it first originated. And it only takes up 6% of the market, but it's the only cacao strain that requires the rainforest to grow. And so, um, yeah, we're going to go back there and uh, talk about what we've done, um, just touch base, see if they're all right, and then also talk about the future because sacred is scaling to the international uh, market and we want to make sure that not only they can sustain our growth but also that this is something that they want for their village to also you know to to grow with us and so we're just going to go there and just yeah double check it's all good and um, and see him again and um, and then yeah prepare for the future yeah, uh, mad invite, but um, the... <laughs> the... Come on, man. You're always excited, bro. I, I didn't get a formal invitation, but uh, I couldn't come anyway Wait, man, financially. We don't but... invitations, <laughs> We just it's rock up. Um, oh, the, like, Dan and I have been mates for a couple of years now. I think we got really... It's, it's interesting because the stuff we're going to talk about in this podcast is a lot of, like, challenging times, failures... Um, things that have helped us get where we are today, but also the things that put us in certain situations, put us into over our life. But it was, we connected over really closely over one of those moments that I was going through. And it's, it's crazy that like, even during this, when I'm going through a really tough moment in my life, like you're there for me again. And it's crazy to see that through these tough moments, like you've still been able to scale your business. I've still been able to kind of grow my business as well. And I think that's, Mm -hmm. That's really impressive. And, you know, if people want to find out more about, you know, Sacred and Cacao, go, I'll link the interview that we did two years ago um, to find I'd out like more to about see that interview again, actually, man. That would be <laughs> it, 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 I think we've, we've both grown and gone through a lot of trauma since then, but um, <laughs> it's, it's all experience points. But, like, why, like, it's pretty random. Like, you know, you're in Peru going back into the jungle, like, do you need like security? Do you need translators? Like what's the actual go? I'm sure you're not just going to rock up and you know, it's a five star plantation. No, definitely not, man. Um, so when I came to the jungle two years ago, two years ago, four years ago, um, yeah, when I came four years ago, it was just myself and you know, we didn't have any, there was no hand holding, uh, and I needed to find two translators, someone that spoke, uh, English to Spanish and then someone else that spoke Spanish to Ashaninka um, and so yeah it's a 16 hour bus ride, 7 hour canoe ride down the Amazon and there there's 300 families, indigenous families that grow and cultivate it in the wild under the forest canopy and so when I came here last time yeah I had to kind of just 
find the translators and on my journey um you know i had a bit of a wild ride trying to find the right people and not get you know um hijacked but this time around after doing four years of trading and four years of business it's a much different game now so uh yeah we're pretty much going to get escorted into the jungle um yeah we are going to get five star treatment but once we get into the jungle, you're in the jungle. So you're in a little bungalow and yeah, you're, it's just you and the forest, uh, mother nature, which, you know, to be honest, that's where I feel most at home. I remember last time I went into the jungle, the fear of going in, I wasn't never afraid of the jungle. I was always afraid of just like the transportation in. I remember even on the bus, on the back of the seat, it said in case of a hijacking, just basically you know, give them your stuff. And I was like, <laughs> what? the heck is this 16 hours of like you know just waiting if it's soon as on the bus edge. stopped yeah <laughs> yeah the bus stopped i'm like hey, what's going on but uh and then after that it was the car ride and then it was the boat ride um but yeah as soon as i touched down on that land you know i felt super safe i felt at home and i'm really looking forward to going back there and this time taking with me a videographer um and um and lily who's been doing the ceremonies with me so yeah looking forward to not only going back there and going back to that land, but also sharing it with people, uh, some of my closest friends, and then uh, also sharing it with the world. You know, last time I actually shot it myself and I was behind the camera shooting everything. I never even made a video in my life. Uh, but this time, yeah, I've got, I've got the professionals coming in to really capture the moment and share the essence of what it is, you know, the Ashaninka story and also the medicine of cacao. Dude, that'll be magic. Yeah, it's gonna be sick, man. I'm looking forward to it, eh? We've got we've got some pretty um pretty awesome videos. Like I was looking back on the um Lost Paradise one and I'm like, Yeah, there's been some fun times. Obviously not jungle being in at Lost Paradise, but <laughs> you know. It was a it was a jungle in that, that main stage. But yeah, we've we've oh, we've done a lot of yeah. we've we've done a lot of stuff together and you know, even for two years of knowing each other or two or three years, whatever it is, like we've been able to achieve a lot, but also do a lot together. And I think that's one of the big things that you bring about is like, how can we all come together to collectively succeed? Because if we're all trying to do it individually, like we can, we can only go so far alone, but together we can go so far together. Um, why? Why were you always like that? Or is it just, you know, yeah, no, nah, I was definitely always like that. Um, I was always, from a young age, I was always a leader. And, and yeah, I was always, like, pulling people together. It's funny because Claire just, like, sent me a message the other day. She's like, I just, I just learned something new about you. And I'm like, what? She's like, I learned that you started a nature squad in school and you got people to, like, collect things from nature for you. I'm like, what the hell? Where the heck did you get that from? And she's like, I read it. It was like on my bio, even on our website. And I didn't even know it because someone else wrote it. Laura wrote it. And, you know, and when you mention this now, like, you know, bringing people together, this is something that I've done since a very young age. And, but bringing people together to do good, I think that's important. And I even remember like when I was in, in high school, you know, or even primary school, um, you know, I was quite a popular person and I always bring people together. But I never believed in the hierarchy. I remember I would always, if I was there, if I was the captain of a team and I meant to choose my team, I would always choose the person that I thought would get chosen last first. So I'm like, this person's gonna get chosen last, I'm gonna choose them first. And I would choose my team in reverse order and we would absolutely lose and get demolished, but we would have the best time and those people would feel so good. And so for me, you know, it's not about winning. It's about enjoying the journey. And I think the win is like, is just in the coming together and just giving it your best and doing your best. And uh, what I love about our friendship circle is that we are all winning. Like we are all winners in our own right. But when we come together, uh, you know, we can win collectively. And, and that's the mission with Sacred is, you know, to bring people back together and to restore the planet to a state of harmony. And we can only really do that if we work together. And so, yeah, that, that's my ethos and my vision and my values. And, you know, it's beautiful to share a stage with you and, and DJ together or a ceremony um, or, you know, a microphone in, in a podcast. It's beautiful to do things together. And so, yeah, I think I'm always going to have that mindset of, um, 
yeah, group mentality and group growth. I think it's way better than individual growth. Yeah, and I think like when you know it's been it's been a uh, a lesson for me. Like I grew up in team sports, so you know I get that as you know playing soccer. Um, even having leadership roles, it was always like, how can we collectively win? And I guess through, you know, running Sala, um, a wellness app, wellness community, and all the things that I do is like, how can I bring everyone together? I always have um, a lot of people a part of the one thing that I do. But also, there's times where, and I can already like hear your brain <laughs> smiling, is like times <laughs> where I'm like, yeah, but I want to succeed myself. I want to prove that I can do this and I don't need Dan or anyone else to help me. Um, and it's, it's not to say that I, I don't like the help. It's just, you know, sometimes you want to prove you can do things. And like, yeah, it's, it's been a grounding experience because like, yes, I, I know that everyone can be a weapon in what they do. And I think that, you know, I was thinking as you were saying that and I'm like, what would you choose me? Would I be the last person and you choose me first? Thanks, mate. But um. I knew you would come around to that. I was like, shit, he's going to put me in the grave with that one. That's all right. I'll pick you first too for that reason. Um, <laughs> the, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's also interesting because normally someone like you and I, um, and this is something I had to learn really quickly, was that we'd come together. But I think because we also have a good, our, sorry, not a good, uh, we have a mission and a purpose that has a positive intention behind it a, a pure intention of like we're actually here to serve humanity whereas if ego gets in the way we would absolutely hate each other we wouldn't work well together yeah it's, it's interesting you know like you say like you know that part of you that wants to succeed by it's by itself like by yourself you know I, I actually i was trying to think about like how i feel about that yeah. and it's like and I, there's a, what the fuck, the first thought that came to my head, it's like, oh, well, I already know I can, can succeed by myself, so why not ex succeed with others? But then I questioned that thought and I was like, I don't know if I can succeed by myself. Like, I would fucking fail by myself. I would fucking fail miserably without my team, without my fam. So that was an absolute lie. And so I had to correct myself. And then that's what I realized. I actually realized, bro, there's no chance that we can do this on our own. There's no chance. I was on another podcast the other week in Switzerland and the guy was like, he talked about something about self-made, you know, are these self-made millionaires? And I'm like, bro, there's no such thing as a self-made millionaire unless he is the, 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 the product, the service, the customer and the, the seller. Because you to be self-made and to make money, you need customers. So, you know, you need people to buy things off as a supplier like what how terrible would that be to be a self-made millionaire you get all the way to the top and you're by yourself it's a very lonely road and so for me i, I know i know individual mentality and i know community mentality and i know tribal mentality and i know as a tribe together we are way stronger when we leverage our strengths and compensate for each other's weaknesses as opposed to trying to be a whole village by yourself and so I guess, yeah, to correct myself or my own thought, yeah, I don't think I, I could be successful by myself. Even when I was DJing, DJing, man, like a DJing is a, like it's, it's a, a one man sport, basically, you know, it's just you and the decks, that's it. But to be honest, without the crowd, without my friends that came and supported me, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have made it to the heights that I made it to, you know, without my, without my boss or my manager that saw my potential and gave me the opportunities, I never would have played at these massive gigs. And so for me, I was always about the community. Even when I got off the decks and I finished DJing, I didn't hang out backstage with the other artists. I got off the decks and went straight to the bar and I took care of all my friends and I spent time, you know, with, with the public. Uh, those who came came to see me and who came to enjoy my music, I spent my time with them. So, yeah, I guess for me, I've always been about the community, even though I'm introverted as fuck. So it's like a bit of a challenge, but I'm always in for the community, man. And I know that, yeah, we can go much further, faster together and enjoy the process and celebrate the wins along the way. There's nothing worse than celebrating a win and turning around and there's no one there to celebrate with. Best to celebrate with others, man. And I think it's also the same for the opposite. Like if, you know, it's, it's 
not a great feeling celebrating by yourself but also when you're in the worst position by yourself like you know and you know, full transparency like i said before i'm going through one of the toughest rock bottoms of my life right with a lot of shit <laughs> going on and you know uh, someone said i was telling them the other day sort of what was happening and they're like you know we're here for you and i'm like you know what i know there's some there's a lot of people that don't have people that are there for them and you know i've got like yourself i've got claire i've got you know a lot of really close a few sorry a few close friends that i can be honest with be open with and i told you the other day i was like fuck, how i was feeling i was like i feel like a failure i feel like you know i'm scared i feel this i feel that and it's like if I was in that moment by myself, I know that's what leads people to do other things, you know, whether it's harm themselves or, or go into more of a spiral if they don't have that support around them. So I think having a tribe of people is so important. But how how do you find that? How, how did you find it? I know for me it was like, you know, what, I'm going to let you answer it. How did you find those tri- that tribe of people, that soul tribe? No, I want to I want to hear your reflection first. I'm keen to hear. For you? My mine would be that honestly being myself in all the ways and being so honest and open but also driven as well not kind of holding back any of those areas has is what has allowed me to attract the people that i have in my life and the quality of the relationships so when i look at you know my close best friends um in the sense of the ones that you know are shared on public so like yourself and claire i've just always been so open and honest yes there was that initial click of like i know this person my soul knows this person but we nourished that with honesty with trust with genuinely caring about each other like you know whenever there was a sacred thing i was there whenever i had something you were there like it's the support that you always in your head you're like that's what friends do but i never really seen that effort or to that extent until you know, you and Claire and even Lily and Steve showed up in my life because, you know, you sometimes have friends that are just friends and you see them every now and again, but you guys were there for for everything, man. Like like we were cooking you guys dinner when you stayed over and, you know, you know, you guys were doing stuff for us. And it's like, that's, that's a tribe. That's not just friends. That's a tribe. Uh Um, But yeah, it was me being me. And then also when I felt that soul connection, it was really stepping in and being super honest. You've seen me, you've seen me break down and cry in a men's circle, right? And you've held me through that. You've seen me go through some of the most, like for me, I go in some points, it's embarrassing, like the most failure points in my life. And you've never been there and been like, yeah, you're a dickhead. No, you've just been like, I'm, I'm here for you. Yeah, you'll, you'll be like, you should probably shouldn't have done that, but you know, whatever, we're here. Like, all I can do is support you. Um, and even the opposite, right? Uh, there's times where we've both been in a situation, Dalesford, where we've both, that morning, right? This is going to go on a little tangent. After a night of whatever the fuck happened, right? Not then whatever the fuck happened, bro. <laughs> that's another podcast. Um, <laughs> the that morning i'm like it was a really awesome place that we were staying had a sauna turned on the sauna i'm like i'm just gonna sweat it out i want to be alone i go back into the sauna like 20 minutes later and you're fucking sitting there and i'm like this is the last person i want to see right now and and then we're sitting next to each other and i was trying to be so like just silent let me meditate shut up and you're like bro we've got to talk about this and (laughs) you know that's why our little joke is like fuck you but i love you because even in those moments it was like we both seen each other in some pretty weird down crazy chaotic times so um yeah to bring the story back it was me being myself and then stepping in that little bit further as well to to show even more of me what about you yeah well for me man like you know it's like i always say man it's one thing to be loved when you're showing people your light it's another thing to be loved when you show people your dark and you know, I've had a lot of people around me because I'm always doing something good, something that has a gravitational pull that people want to be a part of. But I think with this tribe and this particular community and yourself, especially, you know, what happened at Dalesford was like a massive, massive eye opener for me, because uh, for those that don't know, and don't worry, I won't reveal too much, it'll be (laughs) quite, you know, 
secretive, but you know, you brought it up, so you open the door, so I'm gonna walk through. <laughs> and I'm gonna slam it in your fucking face, bro. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna it. padlock it back. Padlock it back. I'm just turn this computer on do not disturb so we don't get any emails coming through but, um, <laughs> yeah so yeah so like, like i said it's one thing to be loved when you're showing people your light it's another thing to be loved when you're showing people your dark and for those that don't know um at dalesford i hired this amazing place and i actually got it for my mum's birthday and you know we my mum hadn't been speaking to my brothers for a while and we got the family together and i remember i went outside and did this little prayer to the land and I was just like, you know, can we, we're going to facilitate a beautiful healing here. I remember I saw like a, an eagle, you know, a black cockatoo. And I just, you know, pretty much asked the land for a blessing and just said, help, help me. Because, you know, my family's struggling. They're struggling to connect. And, you know, this is a good opportunity for us to come together. Anyway, long story short, my, my mom comes and we have this massive healing session. And everything and when, was when you, Hang on, when you say healing session, what is like explain that well, for, my, for, for, for my mom and for my brother like if you know for in that in that session my mom just felt safe and she just opened up and she expressed what she was going through etc etc and um, you know it's really beautiful because um, you know I got to like you know help facilitate just a, a psychological process through that so it wasn't much in terms of like a cow or anything like that but then my mom left and then you guys are meant to come and we were originally meant to go camping but the space was so good and it held us so well that I was like, guys, I got a surprise for you. I've booked out this Airbnb. Let's go to it and let's enjoy it. And we all came to the Airbnb. And then, you know, you guys were always kind of like asking me to do a cacao ceremony. But to be honest, I've never really done one. But you guys saw me as the cacao man and you were like, you know, do a cacao ceremony, brother. Do a cacao ceremony. I'm like, I kept pushing it off, putting it off. And I was like, oh, fuck you. Like, yeah too much pressure i've never really done one and then i don't know what happened one night we started eating like wood-fired pizza we started handing it around in a circle then we started drinking cacao and then you know we just started asking some really deep questions and as everyone started to answer we got deeper we got deeper and then yeah the cacao really brought out a lot of truth and a lot of honesty and um you know i think lily or claire or someone said why don't we share our deepest darkest secrets and i was yeah. Whoa, that was hectic and everyone started sharing their deepest darkest again they literally went around in the circle and i was like the last one and i remember as everyone started to speak i was like starting like i could feel the purge coming on and i'm like oh my gosh like i'm gonna share this deep dark secret and then by the time it came to me i remember i threw a few logs on the fire i'm like all right i'm gonna go deep and i'm feeling pretty nauseous right now as i speak about it but then like I was meant to be like the quote unquote facilitator, but this ceremony unfolded in a certain way in a certain framework in a certain pattern that just made me feel safe enough to reveal myself and like, you know, release all the things that I'd been holding on to for like the past um, year or so. And it was in doing so I was like, I did full surrender, full vulnerability. Like I completely laid myself out in front of you guys and you know, some of you guys are new, known for years and some of you actually knew the secret and some of you didn't and some of you were fresh and barely even knew me, you know, but I've completely laid myself out and, you know, it's really remarkable and beautiful to have you guys hold space and not only hold space, but to still maintain that friendship with me after. Like some of the greatest things that we feel guilt about, shame about, you know, we feel that people aren't going to accept us, you know, if they knew that, but... I was like, man, I need to free myself from this shit. And I just said what I, what I, what, you know, I said, shared what my deepest, darkest secret was. And, um, man, I was met with love. And then from that place, I was like, fuck, man, these guys are my ride or die. Like these guys are going to be there to the end. And the fact that you guys helped, helped me through that. And I was suffering and struggling for, I don't know how long, maybe like a year and you know you guys really released that for me and from then i was like wow i have a duty and an obligation now that i've been healed to actually provide this service for others and that's literally how the new moon cacao ceremonies were born we didn't sit there and think about what to do or create it i was the first person we did the, our new moon cacao ceremony on and i realized how deep how profound 
how amazing it was to go into the darkness and to reveal it and to share it and to share it with others and be received in love. And I feel like that's where, you know, a lot of our healing is. I think we carry the burden of our shame and our guilt and our regrets uh, so closely that it's like poison on the inside. And once we can release that in a safe space, you know, with open hearts using the power of cacao, then, you know, we can create real unity and community. And so, um, yeah, man, for me, for me, it's about working towards a common goal. You know, are we in the same alignment? Are we heading to the same destination? Do we share the same values? But also, will you be there for me when times are, are down and I'm like, you know, ready to give up on myself? Will you guys, you know, not give up on me? And I think that's that was crucial and that's what happened. And I think that's why we're such close friends, man. Yeah. And even like, this is where I think people aspire to 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 friendships like this and and i think it's the depth of of connection and that only comes from vulnerability and and being super yeah. honest with who you are where you're at and you know actually sharing with you like hey dan like this is what's fucking going on and like we, we'll sit and push <laughs> each other so that we do share everything but it's if you don't share those things then <clears throat> you're really only touching the surface and that's where it's like you know, even in the men's circle, right? There was some people there that I didn't know in Torquay, I think it was. Yeah, Torquay yeah, in the TV. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, there's those moments where you, I think when you're sharing, whether it's at a men's circle, women's circle, cacao ceremony, and you're like, I, sh I don't think I should share that or I don't think I can. <laughs> That's normally the times where it was like, I, I need to share. Like even the other day when I messaged you and I was just like, dude, we need to break free of this system. Like, I'm fucking sick of this shit. <laughs> and I I'm sick of, like, going on this roller coaster. We need to find a different way. It's If I didn't say that, you wouldn't have been like, yeah, like, that's that's what I'm fucking trying to do. Like, that's what we're trying to do. <laughs> like, it, it, it is, it's really simple. It's, it's, it's tough in the moment to go that deep. Like, the stuff that happened in Dalesford, like, that's, I don't think that, you know, that's happening very regularly. But, and very <laughs> circumstantial, but... You know, there's there's moments where you know you, you we almost created the space for that to happen, and then we, we leant into it. There we was did. so many times in that whatever was happening where we both could have been like, "Too much, I'm out." Hundred percent. Like, but that's the thing. Like when I came out of that little session, and that well, it wasn't a little, it was a fucking deep mm, session. Bro, it when was I like came... eleven eleven p.m. till five a.m. six a.m. Yeah, it was a good solid like six hours for sure. But when I came out of the session, I was like, wow. And But I was like really like surprised and mind blown that you actually hung around through it because I don't know, man, you like, that would have triggered the shit out of you. And yeah. you know, you're there. And I was like, damn, this guy's still here. Like holding space for me, like what a weapon, you know? And that made me just like, yeah, that just fully like, uh, built my trust and loyalty and yeah man and and that we did we we created that space like we created the intention we sat in circle we did a we did a blessing for our food you know we started having deep conversations i remember it was georgia that asked the first question and she's like turned to me during dinner and she's like what was your childhood like and i was like i'm not gonna answer this lightly i'll tell you yeah. i'll tell you a full story and i end up telling the full story and then i was like what was yours like and then she told us and then the next person and then we asked another question and we just kept kept going deeper and deeper and deeper and i think that's the problem man with a lot of friendships they don't ask enough questions they don't you know inquire enough like i love psychology and i love you know finding out why people are the way that they are and for me if someone wants to ask me a question, it doesn't matter if you're a stranger or not, I'm going to be so open and so transparent that if you don't like it, then you're not meant to be in my circle. You know what I mean? And the vice versa, man, a lot of my friends, like they really do love me and they, they really, um, you know, uh, admire me for my friendship because it's so honest and I can, they, they know that when they come to me, they're going to get an honest reflection. Like if someone feels like they're doing something wrong and don't, but don't know what it is, they'll come to me and I'll be like, well, do you want me to reflect it to you? Like, yeah. But a lot of people want to avoid that because they, they want to avoid the truth. And sometimes the truth is what really hurts, but it's what will set you free. And so 
I feel like what we've created and the culture we've created within our community is a space where, you know, we don't let you get away with shit. You know, if you say that your dream is this and your goal is this and you want to be or you want to do that, if your actions aren't in alignment with that, we're going to pull you up and it's going to be uncomfortable and you may not like it and you may say, fuck you, I love you, but fuck you, right? You might be like, fuck off. But at the end of the day, that's what a true friend is. A true friend is someone who is willing to have the difficult conversations, especially when it's hard, you know? And I'm gonna continue to do that for my friends because I wouldn't consider myself a friend if I saw something that I felt they were doing which is detrimental to their life. And I didn't say anything. What kind of friend would that be? That's just being a coward. And so. I'm not afraid to lose friendships from saying the truth, um, but you know I've learned how to say it with a lot more love, so it can be received a bit better, you know, uh, without judgment. And so, yeah, man, I feel I feel like that's important within our friendships. And Steve does the same thing, you know. Claire does the same thing. Lily does the same thing. And I feel like when you have people around you telling you the truth, not just what you want to hear, but what you need to hear, then you know that's when. Like you can truly be vulnerable, be seen, be held and be accepted and, and have faith in, in your community. Yeah. But how, like, how does, how do people go about finding this? Cause like, this is a question that I get where it's like, you know, I've, I've got people that admire like our friendship and, you know, our, our tribe that we've got. And it's taken a lot of fucking work to get to that point and to, you know, a lot of deep experiences, but also a lot of trusting and a lot of showing up for each other and a lot of effort not effort in the way of you need to do this for me but it's like showing up regardless of of you know i don't i don't place any expectations on my friends but the the effort that people do put in you go okay well this is a bit different than someone that just says they're going to be there but isn't so how does someone how does someone find those people like that's that's Man, what I'm getting, I'm curious full, about. getting full shivers, getting full shivers as I'm about to, you know, express this answer. And the truth, man, in the honesty, is so simple and as as cliche as it may sound, it's love, man. Like, love would make you do anything. Love would make you go to the end of the world for somebody that you love. You know, you guys all came to Lost Paradise, drove like I don't know how many hours, sixteen hours or something in the middle of the night came to Lost Paradise and set up a full bar for Sacred and ran it for like five days, you know, and then went back home and over New Year's for love. And, you know, just after that, we came to Mildura to help you open up your space because we love you. You know, if you truly love someone, you'll do anything for them. And I think there's a, you know, I think there's a, for me anyway, in my perspective, I think there's a bit of a, a deviation from that in in this mainstream culture right now where everyone's talking about self-love and boundaries love is boundless and love doesn't have boundaries and so if you were to say to me dan i need you to come to like spain for this for two seconds i'd be like all right done let's do it like of course let's do it and you know when you love like that and you give love like that and you have friends around you who also receive and give love like that too like man i can count on you guys to do anything like even when i got told i was meant to go to bali for this conference and i had an event on in canberra over the weekend and i said look i'm gonna fly out on monday and the guy was like bro we really need you on sunday that's when the ceremony is he's like can you make arrangements i'm like well the truth is of course i'm being a pepper with my word yes i can make arrangements let me just send out a message. I sent two messages, one to Claire, one to Dion. Hey guys, I'm not going to be able to make the market as intended in Canberra. I've been asked to go to Bali early. Do you think you guys could, you know, cover for me? And they both said straight away, of course, done. And Claire drove 12 hours from Melbourne to like Canberra or nine hours or whatever it is. And Dion drove like 18 hours from Queensland to Canberra just so I could go to Bali and do this event. And who does that, man? Like, who does that? You would only do that if you truly loved those people you were doing it for. And I know I feel a lot of love in, in that. And I would do the same for my friends as well. You know, I would drive to Mujura, you know, all through the night to be there uh, for an event or to support you in any way, in any way possible. Or if there was an emergency, I would drop everything and come that's how you know you are loved. 
that's how you know you have true community. If someone's like, oh, no, it's inconvenient for me or no, it's going to mess up with my plans, then you're just an individual again. You're not a community. Yeah. And I feel like that's missing in society with all this, you know, self-love, set, set your boundaries, you know, da, da, da. I feel like we're going in the opposite direction of where we're meant to be, you know, and I think we're meant, where we're meant to be is in communities and with love and, like a, you know, a beautiful culture as opposed to this, like, you know, the century of the self and individualism and self-made and, you know, all of that yeah. independent one person. If I was having boundaries and, and focusing on self-love, I wouldn't have attended any sacred events last year <laughs> and, and only had four hours sleep every fucking Saturday because of parties. I was driving an hour, two hours to get to point at us to help you DJ and serve cacao. 100%. Until what? Until 12, We, you guys would stay and pack up even later. So like 1 a.m., drive an hour and a half, two hours back home, 3 a.m., wake up at 5, to then go set up for cold and conscious for Steve at Altona. <laughs> and, mate, like I, I swear last year we had the least amount of sleep in my life. That's why both of us are getting greys. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But also, I wouldn't have traded yeah. it for anything because, like, it was an epic year. But you know, it, that, that's out of love, right? I you, like. Would you do that for someone you don't know? Probably, you'd probably like. I've I've got some things to do tomorrow, but you know, for you guys and for what we were doing together, there was no monetary gain for for me in any of that. There was really, zero monetary gain. Like, like, like dar in, directly, no. Like, you weren't paying me, and Steve, at that point, Steve really wasn't either. But it was family, like as if we wouldn't go support. Hundred percent, man. There's no way, like I wouldn't. There's no way that we would. I would charge you for for my services, or you would even charge me. But if the money did come in and we made a profit, we would like, okay, cool. We would split it, but yeah. you know. But it was never like, oh yeah, can you come and DJ and I'll give you two hundred. Like two again, like if you have to say, can you come and DJ and I'll give you two hundred bucks? That's transactional. That's not yeah. love. Like. You wouldn't do that to your brother or you know your mother uh -huh. or whatever you know what i mean just be like can you do this for me yeah of course 100 percent. like i've got your back no, you know I've what i mean invoice. i've got an invoice sitting here on on zero waiting for you bro like... oh, you got an invoice <laughs> for me okay so when i make enough money just it's, press it's, send. Just it's 120 it it's 120 thousand a thousand dollars an hour you're charging bro yeah that's it <laughs> yeah. i've got you down in 120 hours man <laughs> Um, I think it was about yeah. five five hundred hours, but anyway. Same. Same. <laughs> yeah, you're like same. So who's yeah, counting? Who's counting show, bro? show me a spreadsheet, bro. Show me a spreadsheet. Yeah, you, know, you know I've got it on a spreadsheet, man. But I feel I feel like that's what's missing, man. And I feel like you know modern society is actually, um, you know, cultivating you know isolation and individualism and you know this this culture where you know people are meant to be successful by themselves even think about the family unit you know back in the day we used to have like you know the mothers would stay at home and look after the kids while the fathers would go to work now it's like the mother feels like she's nobody unless she's somebody and the only reason why, why she can be somebody is if she's successful at some sort of career and so now the kids are getting put in daycare while the mums and dads are going to work so the mum is being successful the dad is being successful, the child is going to daycare, doesn't feel the love it needs. And so it feels like, wow, for me to feel love, I need to be successful. And then we've created this culture of, if you're successful, then you receive love. Whereas before Aww. it was like, you were just loved just by being born, <laughs> like, which is enough, you know what I mean? And so I feel like this is a bad habit that society is putting on us and you know, even before this, before that individualism, it used to be the nuclear family. And then before that, it was like, you know, families would live together, like groups of families in little communities. And then before that, it was full a tribe or a village. And so I feel like we're going all the way to being individual. Like even now, people aren't even having children. People are not even getting into relationships. You know, people are just really comfortable just by themselves. They're completely independent. And... Yeah, that sounds great and everything, but also it sounds pretty terrible. So I prefer to work in communities and run in packs and, and, and have my have my partner with me 
you know, creating amazing things and creating beautiful memories. Like that's for me, that's what it's all about. This is this is really interesting topic and something we didn't preempt. And like I, I have heard many different things about this, and I've even heard of um, you know, on different podcasts where they're sharing where one of the what one guy had a a friend from a, a different background, different culture, and um, he was working at like a, a normal job, but he was driving like a really nice car and, and the guy uh, uh, as a teenager and the guy was like how can you afford that and he's like well we don't our family all lives together like me my brothers it wasn't a teenager sorry in his 20s me my brothers all have wives and we still live at home with our mum, and we put all our money together we buy that house but we buy multiple properties when we have a car we share that car we don't have six cars and six mortgages between like all individual and all struggle we all come together and we all live together and i think that like in theory in my head i go that sounds good but like obviously you know there'd be a challenge of like the dynamic of living together but it doesn't mean you live in the same room together like when we like you guys did it last year you claire steve even though you guys were barely even in the house but it's like yeah, I think the, the the boundaries thing, like in a situation like that is, yeah, you, you have space to yourself and you know when there's times of space. Like, But at the same time, what you're saying, like it would solve a lot of our problems where a lot of the problems of feeling alone, a lot of the problems of feeling so disconnected. Um, you know, when when mothers were staying home, they didn't stay home going, I don't have a purpose. They were staying home going, I'm looking after my children. That is my purpose. And it wasn't for Instagram to look X, (laughs) Y, Z. Well, really? like, And and it's not to say that you can't be the dad and stay home or or whatever your situation is. Like, there's nothing wrong with being a provider and there's nothing wrong with being a carer in both sides to it. Just like there's nothing wrong with whatever job or career you choose to do. I think it's society and social media and the Forbes top 100 list has, has put these ideas where, and don't get me wrong, me and you want to do lots of things and we want to be successful in the ways of helping communities and, and making a lot of money so that we can help even more. But it's also with family as one of the highest values in there. 100% man, and you hit the nail on the head and there's a lot to unpack in that. And so, you know, for me, yeah, being a provider as a masculine male, that is my highest of high roles. I mean, I have no one to provide for right now. I have no partner, I have no children, but this is my motivation moving forward. Like, I mean, if I was to just take care of myself, I, I probably wouldn't work as hard because I'd just be happy just to chill and live quite humbly. You know, I live out of a bus or a van, like I've got multiple vehicles, but I love my freedom. So I'm happy to do that. But the thought of, you know, meeting someone and, and, and having a partner and then raising a family, you know, that puts a lot of pressure on me as a, as, a, as a provider. And there's no way that I want my partner to either have to work or, you know, want to work. I want her to be able to do whatever she wants. And so, you know, I'm working very hard now. So, you know, when the right time comes where I meet that partner um, or, you know, we unite, um, I would be super keen to be that to be that provider because for me I'm the provider I'm the servant to that woman because the for me the highest role in the world and the highest job you can do is be a mother that's like the most important role we are here because of our mothers without them we wouldn't be here they have literally birthed us into this existence there is nothing more important there is no no role more important than being a mother and i feel that being a mother is actually not as highly revered or as regarded as it should be and some like you know in parallel to that similar to with our elders our elders used to be highly revered now they're just chucked in a nursing home and like fed pills until they like they you know until they pass of just loneliness and then our kids who used to actually hang out with our elders, like our grandparents used to take care of our kids and used to, you know, imbue their ethos and their views and their values and their traditions of, you know, respect and and gratitude and whatnot to the kids. And the kids would would learn from the elders and would inherit some of those traditions while the middle aged, you know, mother and father either went to work, hunted berries and collected kills or whatever the case may be. But that's all gone. That's all gone. 
and they used to all live in the same village or the same under the same roof and they would all not feel alone they would feel like they're a part of a community the community of their own family and you know like you said it would be difficult in a house with like you know five brothers and their partners and mothers and this and that but i think what's different i know you're talking about it was andrew tate who actually said that one but he said there was a Mus- it was a muslim family and you know in a muslim family and in you know non-western cultures respect is a massive part of the culture and if you have respect then you generally give space and you generally keep your shit to yourself and you deal with it it's not all about you but unfortunately in western society and western culture you know that respect is not given it's more of an entitlement and you know you, you push your limits and you push your boundaries and you fight with your mother you fight with your father and you you don't have as much respect you talk back and I feel that, that then, you know, what's happened now is kind of like, you know, a result of that or at least, you know, somewhat, you know, cyclical in its behavior. But, you know, to be honest, I've always said this to my family, even though my family split when I was very young. My mum left when I was 14, my dad left when I was 16. But since a young age, like even since 16, you know, I was with my older brother and I was like, bro, why don't we work together and like, buy this house or, you know, rent this house or even my mum. I'm like, why don't we all work together, save some money and, 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 and buy a house. But no one really wanted to, to do that. <laughs> no one really wanted to, to work with me. And so I was like, oh shit, well, I better go do it on my own. But I didn't want to do it on my own. So I basically only sort a tribe and a family to do it. And now it's really beautiful because all my friends who are within my friendship circle, including you, we're all entrepreneurs. I mean, we weren't always all like that. Some of us, like, you know, I met you, you were already doing it. But, you know, for example, when I met Lily, you know, she was like stuck in the system and she was like, you know, got a job. But since meeting me and being in my circle, it's very hard to stay in a nine to five unless it's your your destiny and your, your dream. And so every single person that I know within my field is actually broken free of the nine to five and are actually doing what they love. And when we do what we love, that's when I feel like the world will know peace. And so when we are an entrepreneur and we're building a business, we understand the value of teamwork. When you're a staff member and you're just doing your job, you do your job, you check in, you check out, you go home, you get your paycheck, that's all individual. Uh, You can work in a team, of course, but when you're an entrepreneur, you really begin to realize the value of every single person around you and and how they can support you and how you need your team. You need your accountant, your lawyer, you know, your friends, whatever it might be. And I think from that mentality, you know, it is a bit more of a survival mentality, but also like how can we thrive as a community? And I feel like that's where the mindset comes in. I feel like a lot of people who may not have found their tribe may not have actually found what they're here to do and what their purpose is. When you find your purpose and you find out what you love and you find your gift and you start sharing it, people are going to gravitate towards you. If you're just living a mundane life and just going nine to five and checking in, checking out and then partying on the weekends or whatever, you're not going to find people that are going to be in alignment with your path. So, you know, to answer your question, how do you find a community like this? We've all found each other because we've all found our path and our purpose. And when we met, it's like our, pur- our path and our purpose aligns. So why wouldn't we work together, you know? And we've done enough work to put our ego aside where we don't compete with each other, but we actually collaborate with each other. And I think that's the next you know, important step on that journey. So yeah, I think first and foremost, find out who you are, why you're here, start doing it. And then you watch people will fall off, but the real people will come and they'll gravitate. And yeah, you'll be aware enough to know that they should stay. Are you answering the question from like 31 minutes ago? Yep. <laughs> Jeez, we went on a rant there. <laughs> you answer all the questions, bro. Bro, we, we went to tribes. We went to Dalesford. We went everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are. How do people, how do people this find, is, find yeah. the tribe? You know, yeah. how do they find it? It's like, man, people don't. People just think that they're gonna plug into a plug into a, a, a tribe, but they're not. To be in a tribe, you have to actually have to know what value you're gonna to add to that tribe, um, you know, and also what type of tribe is it? A tribe that drinks alcohol and parties every weekend, or is it a tribe that wants to do good for the world? 
You know, is it a tribe that values, you know, is it in alignment with your values? And how can you add value to that tribe? That's and I also think about. along along that way, like as much as, you know, I don't want to lose you guys in, in any of the sense because it is such a strong bond. I don't think that would happen. But there's been times where, and I don't, I don't know for you, where I've lost a lot of people that were close to me at one stage or were my best friend and best friend in business. And that went, you know, there, there was an error there. And now, you know, block, deleted, don't speak. And, and you know, that's unfortunate. And you never think these things are going to happen. But um, I think along the way, like those things had to happen in order for me to fall into, you know, this friendship circle that I have now. Like, look at all the people that are even part of, like, whether it's sacred, sala, everything that we've done, like that were there, and then have fallen off because you know that's it's whether they brought in certain expectations or um, any any reason, high or low. It's like you, you the true people will stay will stay there the tribe will stay there well to be honest you know i just came back from this conference uh where they're talking about building communities and you know like eco communities and things like that and basically one thing that i learned from that space is that there's different levels of consciousness um and you know there's obviously like super enlightened and then there's people that are completely you know fear-based and there's different layers like you know from like fear to love and yeah. you know all these sorts of different levels and you know when there's a group of people and they're all on the same level and on the same vibration on the same frequency at the same level of consciousness everything's beautiful but if a small portion of that group or 50 percent of that group start to actually level up their consciousness it's fine if it's like here because it's still like incoherence but as soon as it starts to separate and go like this that's when it falls off and you know everybody evolves at different stages at different paces and you know i've been someone in my field i've actually you know cycled through a lot of different friendship groups but and i'm not trying to like evolve my consciousness i'm just trying to be myself and enjoy the ride but the ride is taking me you know to some pretty special places um but that's actually what happens um and i feel like yeah there's many people that i've dropped off there's no animosity or anything like that. Absolutely love them. I think they're beautiful human beings and I would still love to be uh, in their friendship circle. But when we hang out and get together, the conversation is stuff I wouldn't talk about, you know? And so it's a bit more difficult because we're on a different wavelength. And, you know, my only hope is that with the tribe that we've created, that we ha- one of our values is growth and we continue to grow together. Because as soon as of us, as soon as one of us says, "No, nah, you know what? That's enough growth for me right now," the rest will continue to grow, and and that person will fall off. Um, but yeah, for me, it's always about growth and and connection, and contribution. And I think that's what you know we do with our businesses. We teach people how to grow, how to connect, and the whole thing is about contribution and service, service to others, service to humanity. And for me. As long as people in my circle are doing that, we're always going to be friends because I'll always want to be a part of that and to give my service and contribution to that as well. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Um, and along those ways, like we, we said yesterday, we're going to talk about our failures. <laughs> so, What's that? We said yesterday we're going to talk about our failures. So, um, Or maybe, maybe we could save that for the next podcast. But um, what... Because there's going to be many of these. Like I, I love this sort of. Me and you are going to have a lot of these because it's like, one, we love the content, but two, it's. But we've just got so much to talk about. I think one podcast a year is just definitely not enough. Um, what, what have you, what have you got in the pipeline? What's, what's, where are you at right now, and what's, what's moving forward? I think a lot of people, you know, listen to this or, or listen to what we do and what we're doing, and they're, you know, they're waiting and and watching and curious to what we do what's what's on the vision for you i've got a very big vision like my vision goes to pretty much till 2030 and you know what we're doing now we're we're definitely on pace to, to 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 hitting that you know my vision is to basically build multiple platforms and businesses that people can jump on um i have a habit and a knack for creating strategies and creating businesses that really do work uh, and can work, um, you know, without me involved as well. It can work in isolation. Um, But, you know, to 
keep it relevant to what the community already knows uh, we're sacred you know we've I've just come back from Switzerland where you know we've actually brought on a lot of distributors there and we're doing parties and ceremonies you know we're in multiple countries I've come back to Peru but for me like my focus for the next few years is just to really focus on this business um, and to really take it to the world before it was just a belief that you know I could be done but I never really knew if it was possible but now we've like broken through the barrier it's beautiful like we're not even going out and doing acquisition or outreach like people are coming to us some of the biggest brands in the world are coming to us and you know that's a testament to the hard work and the dedication that I've put in for so many years and within this business alone I've faced so many challenges and so many difficulties and so many obstacles um, you know and to have gone through all of those and continued I think is a testament to my new character because my old character you know similar to you as a manifesting generator man if one thing gets hard I'll just go start something else you know and I have a habit of starting multiple things but never finishing one and so it's beautiful to continue uh, with this business and I'm grateful that Sacred has so many aspects to it the products the services the ceremonies the parties you know even the new online stuff we're about to do uh, for me I'm very grateful that it's got so much weight into it because yeah I'm not getting bored of it and um, I'm just grateful that it's taking me around the world now and so yeah for us um, yeah pretty much introducing Sacred to the global market wrapping it all around the world, creating parties, creating ceremonies for everyone to come together and enjoy and to build a, an, an online global community where like-minded and, and heart-centered people can come together and meet people, you know, such as yourself um, so we can find each other because, you know, we are all out there. And, um, and then, yeah, and to support people in achieving their own dreams and their own visions. How about yourself, man? What you got? What's on the cards for you, bro? Uh, well, I think you know, definitely right now in a, a very interesting transition period of you know life and business, and and you know a lot of that's well, the, the, the biggest parts of my life is life and business. So um, to have a lot of big challenges in both of those has made life very interesting right now. But um, like I said, I'm grateful to have you know, my friends around me that have been supporting me through this time. And, you know, as much as you, I'm going through it and it is really tough um, and challenging, it's also like I know this is leading towards the next thing or leading towards the next element of growth or the next part of my journey. And, you know, I'll look back in, you know, hindsight and be like, oh, I needed to go through that. But, um, you know, right now, like for the past year, been running Sala um, and that's coming to a close or a pause at the moment um the hub that i've had for six months closing that um in a in a week um you know financially it's it hasn't been working and i think that's a part where people don't understand in business brick and mortar businesses this happens too if, if things aren't profiting then it's costing you um and yeah so that's been a big challenge in closing that but it's also opened more space to do more work in bringing back the podcast like this was something that you know i did consistently for four years and you know got to speak to you know incredible people and got to travel with it as well and i think once i fell out of alignment with the thing that i love most and started doing other things because of you know whatever it was you know shiny objects or whatever i lost a bit of who i am i lost that passion and that drive and now that i'm back into it i'm like this is this is it like this is what i want to be doing so doing more of this helping you obviously with yours and and, and getting your shit together um online because you know up until what three months ago you had zero posts online and now we can just so. elevate that and we're, we're just like you know we speak about this and i'm sure we can share this is like we're, we're trying to get ourselves out there like you know i see a lot of people in the media um, or on social media that are getting huge on social media for ridiculous reasons and you know for being on fucking love island like and talking shit so uh, i'm like let's not go there man I, I we both did get invited to go on tonight, <laughs> i got the phone call I, I declined you you actually went into interviews but we, well, we can't even talk about that bro well you maybe can't talk about it well you said that didn't you sign a contract? <laughs> nah, bro, I didn't sign any, I didn't sign any contracts, man. Good we man. still, we Good still man. went out there, bro. Good man. Yeah, I, still, I bro. feel like there should be, a, 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 you know, and we'll create this, a TV show where it's like, 
conscious this stuff. I don't know if it'd be called mass, but um, ceremony at first sight. Um, but really, for me, it's like I, I, both of us, we're both ideas people. So you know, for me, you know, joining forces with you, um, is something that is really exciting because you know, to get like you said, together we can do a lot more and you know i'm excited to help sacred and help yourself get out there more and we're both just trying to reach a lot more people and share a good message that we have like everything that we spoke about today is really good and it's you know we i get you know quite a few listeners on the podcast but what if a lot more people heard this what if a lot more people got to have those seeds planted in their mind you know what impact would that have on themselves their family their community the world so for me moving forward is like First and foremost, I've, I've also got to look after myself in a lot of different things where I was giving a lot, um, give back to myself. So really focusing on my health, my financial wealth uh, and health and, um, you know, things close to home. And then from there, it's, it's yeah, really expanding on the things that I love doing and I want to share, which is, you know, my eight week conscious blueprint program, um, inspired blueprint, sorry, and the podcast and then all the stuff that we've got planned, which is with like minded and bringing like-minded people together and bring them in a platform where there's no algorithms there's no um you know none of the bullshit that we see on all these other platforms and that's why it's designed that way to keep people in it to then keep people dumb and focusing on the shit that doesn't matter so yeah it's it's like you know even if you're listening right now or watching right now you know i'm sure you're nodding your head like yeah like that's that sounds like me too you wouldn't be listening to this otherwise you would have cut out a long time ago and started watching maths but um the <laughs> i think i think this is the this is the turn that like we we both don't do this from a place of i just want to be famous like there's a bit of me that's like yeah i want to get to that point but also from a place of so that my message can be heard not from so i can make the most money hundred percent it's the same with me i don't really care I don't, actually to be honest i don't want the fame and you know even i'll on take my it Insta- bro give it to me take the fame bro <laughs> like, take the fame and i don't even want to run my own instagram like i want like one i would love for you to run it for me or someone to run it for me because this is the thing you know, bro you just need you just need some pictures bro the videos are great but you need some of you on there pictures come on man Take a like, selfie, bro. Come on. I don't even, I've never taken a selfie in my life. I'm not going to take a selfie. And you know, the I'll funny thing you. is, man, I actually live like quiet and extraordinary life. Like, bro, it's been from Bali to Switzerland to Peru. And, and no back. one knows. And no one knows the thing. And I'm like, I've got these videos where it's like, you know, it's beautiful scenery and whatnot. But I'm like, man, I really should have posted that. But it's like, I really, yeah, I really can't be bothered. I would but rather that's the thing. Like, me around and do it for me than do it true. myself because but I just want to be I feel like you, in in this world right now, like what, what do you do? Like you're on social, we're on social media. Like if we don't post, we don't get seen. We don't get seen. Our message doesn't get heard. But like, I don't know. It's it's it's, it's a. It's, it's, to be honest, man, I actually like. I'm literally half mine. I mean, I did. I mean, I, I paid someone to follow me around last year, but it didn't quite <laughs> translate to, you know, being on, getting it out there. But I would maybe I'll give it another shot. Pay someone to follow me around, take videos, enjoy enjoy the lifestyle, and share the message. Because yeah, that's for me. It's like man, I just want the message to be heard, and whatever messages I do put out there. Whenever I meet someone, like I met someone in Switzerland and had so many conversations and. Just ask them the question, like what who like the general questions are, who are you? What do you do? And they're like they tell me about their job and it's like, Well, what's your dream? Like, what would you wanna do? And then they like, Oh, either I haven't thought about that or I'd really love to do this and then I take them on a journey within ten minutes and we identify their dream and then they're like, Well, why haven't you done it? And they're like, Oh, because you know, I gotta pay my bills, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. And I'm like, okay, cool. Well, how much do you know how much money you need to survive? They're like, nah. I'm like, well, here's a spreadsheet. Boom. Now they know how much money they need to survive. It's like, oh my gosh, that's actually achievable. I could do this with my business. Like if I made a business, I'm like, I know. And then we can literally come up with the products or services and how many they would need to sell in order to live live their, their survival of their best life and literally break them free. Like, man, that's a fucking beautiful life. And so... 
you know, for me, I would love to be able to help as many people as I can do that. And um, yeah, unfortunately, social media is a tool to do that, but I haven't been utilizing it very well. So hence until now, yes. until now, and this is the thing, like, this is why, like, we were talking about this the other day, why we, we work so well, because like, my, my eight weeks is all about helping people f- connect back into who they really are so that you know finding your purpose connecting more connection to yourself connection to your purpose and creating the life you want to live right through forgiveness through gratitude through compassion through all these different processes that you know through three nearly 400 people have been through in the past four years with me and then it's like then the next step is where you come in and so beautifully put it where it's like okay let's actually you you discover your purpose and then you're like oh shit like i'm in a situation where I am doing it, but not in the way that I want to be doing it. And then you go, okay, one, here's the strategy for it. And I think that's a that's a big part that a lot of people miss. I think a lot of people jump too quick to what they say on Instagram, where it's like, you know, be the X, Y, Z. And it's like, well, let's let's take the journey together. Um, let's sit, sit in a few ceremonies. Let's let's work through some stuff along the way, but then also have a strategy there to actually do it because business can it can be really tough right and and you know we've been blessed with a lot of success along the way um but also that's come with a lot of behind the scenes that no one sees 100 percent, 100 percent. and you know to be honest business is going to be the one thing aside from an intimate relationship that you really care about business is going to be the thing that's going to expose your weaknesses to you it's going to expose where your shortcomings are, like where your shortfalls are, and it's like public, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's difficult because then the ego gets involved and it's worried about what other people think. But to be honest, I mean, myself personally, I don't really care. Like if I lose sacred tomorrow, I'll just be like, cool, what's next? But um, for me, it's just a game and I like playing the game and, you know, and so far so good like you know we're becoming very successful and we're achieving um targets and 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 milestones that man i only dreamt of achieving and we're starting to achieve that now and i think you know it's really beautiful just actually observing myself like since achieving it in the past few months you know especially i'm now bringing my friends together with me on this journey uh, in a financial way too and yeah, uh, yeah, it's really, that's really special. And I really do look forward to, to sharing this journey with you and with Lily and with Claire and with Jess and with anybody else who wants to come on this journey um, with us. It's actually been a very beautiful ride and I really do see us getting to that final destination. Um, yeah, where we can create a bit more harmony on this on this earth. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, man, there's there's so much to look forward to. And I think that because we are so driven and we do have such a long-term vision it's like it's it's we'll, we'll sometimes take the sidestep and the things that we have you know whether there's a challenge or whatever but we're always kind of consistent on that's the vision and that's what i that's what i think really resonates with all of us is that we all have that common mission and, and goal and and you know if, if sacred's the vehicle for that then sacred's the vehicle but um like you were saying like when we bring all of us together that's when you create a team that's unstoppable and it's like it goes back to soccer right you you don't necessarily have to have the best players but if the players that you have all do their job and also work together you can beat any team and i've man proven that so many years of my life playing in teams that weren't the best team on paper but we won everything because we played well together and we worked well together with the common mission yeah Yeah, and that's the thing, like, it's not necessarily that, you know, we all have to come on board with sacred, like, sacred is just one vehicle that's going to a destination, and the beautiful thing is, is, like, everyone else who is working for sacred has something of their own going for them, and if we can help sacred break through the ceilings, which are so hard to break through, like, you know, million dollars of revenue, multi-million dollars worth of revenue, like breaking through those ceilings, international which is, exposure. Which is coming up. <laughs> Bro, man, we like, I'm happy to say, let me think about it. Yeah, we're pretty much, we're pretty much there, man. Like we're, yeah. we're definitely going to crack that, that, that ceiling this year. Uh, it's, it's already on that trajectory to being super expansive. Um, but like once we break through those ceilings, 
um, then it's very easy to allow the other businesses to just to come straight through. Like Sacred has man been just take has, Sacred has taken so many blows. Like it's just been punished, but it's such like a a weapon because it just keeps going and it just doesn't stop. And I love it because once it breaks through all the barriers and even myself personally, once I break through my own limiting beliefs about running a multi-million dollar business and or even like, you know, uh, you know, multiple teams across multiple continents um, and having everyone come together, I think for me, you know, once we learn how to do that and become the character that can create a multi-million dollar business, then we have the knowledge and the information that I can pass down to the next person to do the same. And I know that most of my people within my friendship circle have achieved the same heights that I've achieved in my business journey. Um, and so I know that if as far as I can take it, I know I can take everybody else. And they say, yeah, a rising, a rising tide lifts all boats. And sacred is like, you know, is the pioneer in that rising tide. And so I'm so grateful for it. I'm so grateful for the journey. I'm so like it's going it's full circle man i'm actually like going through it's a bit of an emotional kind of uh position you know back in peru man where it all started this journey literally was only like it's only been a four-year journey we only really went to market in february 2021 so it's only been two years in the market wow. and we're already yeah man like dude like like seriously like we started in 2017 but we didn't, I didn't take it seriously until I went into the jungle. When I went to the jungle, I came back out, COVID happened, and we only really put it into proper packaging in February, 2021. And now it's what, July, 2023. So like two and a half years, and we're already like right at the top, like right at the cusp of being the biggest cacao brand um, in Australia, like if not the world. And we're definitely not showing any signs. The signs are slowing down. In fact, we're expanding rapidly and pretty soon we will be, yeah, probably the number one cacao brand in the world, in our, in our field, drinking cacao, four flavors, superfoods, um, ceremonial events, you know, and for, you know, the best thing is that it's wild crafted and, and yeah, it helps the environment, helps preserve the rainforest rather than destroy it. So man, I'm, I'm all about it, so. You know, and at the end of the journey, man, if we can raise enough capital and protect a million acres of Amazon rainforest and at the end of it, buy a little piece of the rainforest for ourselves to enjoy and for our community to, to have an experience and to share and to preserve and to protect, then that's a goal worth fighting for. So all the challenges, all the issues, all the times where I thought I was going to give up, I'm very grateful that we've kept going and I'm very excited about going back into this jungle in the next few days and seeing mm. how it's going in there, man. Oh my gosh, it's going to be crazy. Yeah, definitely look forward to all the all the videos and photos. And literally when this gets uploaded, like you'll be in the jungle. So um, I don't know how your, <laughs> gonna, how, your, how your Wi-Fi is going to be, but uh, yeah, I'll, I expect some some photos and videos on WhatsApp. Man, everyone's asking me for photos and videos. I haven't done any yet, but um, luckily I've got a, a camera. I just get photos of you in the in, in the barber shop getting a haircut. <laughs> Good faith, bro. You asked me where I was. I have to show you, bro. He was giving me the full treatment, man. Like you know, full massage, beard, everything, trial, everything. Yeah, bro, it was amazing. What do they speak over in Peru? Spanish. Ah, it's I such a beautiful English. <laughs> it's such a beautiful language, man. Like I'm actually picking up, picking Com it up a lot. Como estas? Como estas? Muy bien. Muy bien. <laughs> yes, too. <laughs> ah, sí, sí. Uh, I love it. I love it. It's so good. Thanks for joining me, bro. Even, even, you know, what's the time there? Like 11 p.m. 20 past 11 right now. Pwah. Crazy man, but I, I enjoy, appreciate you. I enjoyed you. this man. It's actually quite easy on on Riverside. I really liked it. Next time you're gonna have to jump on my podcast and we can unpack some shit, bro. We've recorded with you once before, and that's still back in the lo when I had blonde hair, bro. That's still just okay. sitting there. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm gonna record it, but then you I actually interviewed you. I don't even know where that is. No, you yeah, you interviewed me as well, and I and I interviewed you. Where is that content? See, this is the thing, man. <laughs> <laughs> but also, I didn't release a podcast for six months, and I recorded podcasts, and I was like, I'm sorry, guys. Like, that, it's it's over six months old, and, like, 
we're not even the same people anymore. But that's all right. It's it's there's a lot more from both of us coming out where like content, YouTube, all that stuff. Because at the end of the day, it's also a legacy that we both want to leave of like sharing this journey and also sharing having these little checkpoints. You know, whether it's once a month, month or quarter or whatever, where we're checking in and sharing what's happening. Because you know, otherwise good luck trying to see it on social media um with the algorithm but on the other side is like we've both got communities you know i've got the inspired collective you know you can jump in there we're going to be in there a lot more active and then sacred will have its own community and like-minded so um lots to keep up to date on and be involved in if you want to be a part of all this fun stuff we've got a party coming up in a full moon party in melbourne which is going to be really awesome uh great to be back behind the decks dan won't be there for it but um that's all right. right. We'll hold we'll, I'll be there for the next one, man. I'll be there for the next one. Before, the and then we, go to Nepal. we go to Nepal and then we go to India and, and maybe Sri Lanka and we'll do parties and And then and back to Melbourne after that. Or is that Probably. after Melbourne? No, no. So I'm going to go from Peru to Switzerland, Switzerland for six weeks. And then I'll come back to Melbourne for maybe two weeks just to see you guys and have a party and actually like sort out all my vans. Like, <laughs> these way i'm gonna sell them or do something or donate them or whatever and then i'll be going to the yeah, nepal india sri lanka and then from there i'm not too sure man i might not come home i might just go back to switzerland and um and stay in switzerland until christmas and then come back for lost paradise i'll definitely be there for that by the way we're locked in for that by the way lock it in <laughs> <laughs> there's not even a discussion of like hey like this would be a great idea i was like oh are we saying yes to this because i'd have to organize my life but we have to say yes you know what because they're offering us they're offering us a stage no a way stage. no yeah, way bro. Yeah, bro. legit <laughs> yeah legit they're offering us a structure and a stage we don't have to bring a structure they're going to build the structure for us man and integrate us into it do you need these bars or i'm going to throw them <laughs> um you can, bro, you're probably going to have to. Mm, you can oh, yeah, I'm there. just going to have to drive halfway across the country just to deliver them to Lost Paradise. It's all right. That's all right. <laughs> just put your bed on top, bro. Just sleep on top of them like I did last time. That was, I built you a great bed out of those pallets, man. <laughs> <laughs> Well, see, this is why. This is why. If anyone's listening that wants to literally, oh, look at that, two, 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 two. Um, Saturday, twenty second of July, two twenty two p.m. If you want to follow us around and actually record this stuff, because we get up to some crazy, we we you know what? I shared my first camping experience, like camping in a swag, with Daniel Kosh. So you know, very to the jungle, my man. Very Welcome memorial the- part of my life. But um, if someone wants to follow us around and be a part of all this, but also just film it and, and take this content. It's actually a pretty interesting life that we live. Like I try explain it to people, and I only get to like you know level one of level a hundred like you know a hundred levels and they're like whoa that's so different to just you know working a job and it's like yeah wait till you hear the rest of it <laughs> yeah man every day is a different day no two days are the same i don't even know where i'm sleeping like half the time i don't know where, where i'm gonna be staying but I'm that's community. that's why we all have vans so just in case we can just <laughs> yeah yeah but now i've just got a backpack now and i just take this backpack with me wherever yeah, i go backpack that doesn't even have a ring light or, you know, I need to get this ring light, bro. This would be a same You need thing. a tripod. I got a tripod that's like this big, folds down to this big, and then you can. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. I need to get some. I need to get some more tools, for sure. We'll get but yeah, man, that was a good chat. I think. Thank um, you. Let's do this again, and next time I'm gonna interview you, and we're gonna unpack something. We're gonna unpack right. something. I don't know. That's what my podcast like is like. The only, the only packing pack. I'm going to be doing is packing my bags and getting no, out of I... here. <laughs> going back to Bali. No, and, then, and then I'll be unpacking the very little that I take with me. Um, <laughs> some board shorts and a singlet. The bin, no, man, uh, not you... bin tang, a changu, changu singlet and I'm, I'm there. Man, if you don't unpack... Actually, you know what? It would be a sacred singlet if you got some bloody merch. Sort well, you're, in charge, so. you're in charge of that now, bro. So you make sure you make that happen. 
Yeah, we'll just drop ship to everyone. But anyway, <laughs> we can do all that. Um, and for those that are listening, just you know, go to the link in the bio. Links in the bio, everything. Connect with Dan, connect with Sacred. There'll be a discount for Sacred on there. Um, and then also connect with the with the show, the Carlos Rilo show. You'll see all the snippets on there. Um, <laughs> and also, like we were saying before, like we, we want to be known because we want to plant those seeds. So if you're watching this and you love it, one, go follow it. Two, um, leave a comment somewhere, like even DM one of us and say, this was great. But also share the snippets that I put up because that's where people learn. Like some of the, you know, the reels in the past few weeks have got like five, six, almost 10,000 views. That's where we learn and share this information. So we'd really appreciate that. Um, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being part of everything that we do. And um, much love until we see you next time. Ciao, bro. Hey.